Hey everyone! I embarked on this journey of growing adeniums from seed many years ago, and today I'm happy to share their current state. The year was 2014. I had fallen in love with this genus, a combination of my favorite plant characteristics. Beautiful flowers, interesting sculptural forms, and drought tolerant. It really is one of my favorite plants, even though, as you'll find out, I have neglected my seed-grown adeniums in recent years. The plant itself, on appearance, is defined by its caudex, which is the swollen stem. Additionally, adenium sap is poisonous, so make sure you wash your hands often when handling this plant. All those years ago, I bought my seeds online, and they came all the way from Thailand. I purchased them from adeniumseeds.com of all places and I'm not affiliated with them but I have liked the quality of the seeds and have since made a few more orders with them before. In fact I still have the envelope from a subsequent order right here. I've kept the envelopes perhaps because they came from Thailand which I thought was pretty cool but probably also sentimental value as growing these really made me fall in love with seed growing in general and shaped me as a gardener. It was one of my first adventures in growing succulents from seed. I had grown annual flowers, but this was something very different and very exotic. So after all these years, I've grown a decent collection of adenium obesums from seed and now they're creating seed pods on their own, which has been a really exciting development. But with this many, I had them planted in very basic planters because the containers were cheap to buy in bulk. But it was clear they were unattractive. I had also neglected them, which if there's a plant you're going to neglect, it's going to be this one. Still, over time, the soil line on all of them had dropped considerably. Every time I'd water, some of the soil would escape through the drainage holes. On top of that, they'd occasionally catch a gust of wind during a storm, fall over, and dump out all their soil. A lightweight plastic pot certainly does not help. So we're catching them at the end of summer, beginning of fall, and I chose this time to replant them because the days of 106 degree weather are over, but they're still actively growing. Some are even flowering again, as you'll see. Now for me, they usually flower in June, go dormant for July and August, and start flowering again in September. In fact, that's how a lot of plants for me go. There's usually a break in the middle of summer. I've done a few different sowings of adenium seeds throughout the years, so the ages of the plants are a little mixed up at this point. Oops. So I decided to revitalize them with fresh soil and a new pot for each of them and document them for you all. Now terracotta is usually a cost-effective solution that many of us have used before in the past, but I wanted something that was a little more unique. So it was time to go shopping. And luckily, I was able to find these basalt pottery planters, which are very similar to terracotta in their moisture wicking ability. You may have seen them in your nursery, but they're a little more rare than the typical terracotta. They're also a little bit more expensive, but I felt they were worth it. And just me personally, I'm just so tired of terracotta at this point, and I'm sorry to the terracotta lovers out there, but I like change. And so we are back in the yard, and it's time to show you all my supplies I've acquired for today's video. For the organic base for my soil mix today, I'm using Fox Farms Ocean Forest Soil, which has added earthworm castings and bat guano. You really don't need much organic matter for succulents, but a little can help provide feed for flowers and foliar growth. I will also be using expanded shale, which is one of my most favorite soil aggregates. It provides excellent drainage, along with some added moisture retention. Now those traits sort of seem like opposites, but they're not. The shale allows the water to freely drain through the pot, but it also absorbs moisture and slowly releases it back into your soil. 
And finally, I'll be adding perlite, which many of us are familiar with because it promotes drainage. This particular perlite is nice because the granules are larger than what you normally buy in the big box stores. I purchased this coarse perlite from Amazon and I will put a link in the description. Oh, and one last thing, I'm going to need one little terracotta pot. What could I possibly use that for? Well, mostly to take out my aggression on, but also as a byproduct of that, now I have some pieces to put at the bottom of my planters to cover up the drainage hole a little bit so I don't lose excessive amounts of soil. The piece won't block the hole entirely, it'll just help filter out the water without losing soil. Uh, excuse me, sir or madam. Just a quick intermission break. If you've enjoyed my content and want to show your love as well as stay hydrated in the garden, I have a limited set of water bottles featuring my love for happy flowers and the botanical logo. I'll put a link in the description where you can purchase it from my website. So here we are with my mini chubby forest. It's time to take a look under the hood. So these plants have been in the soil for a few years by this point. The soil has broken down a lot and it's quite sandy now. It's obvious why so much of the soil has escaped from the drainage holes. I love repotting plants because you get a better sense of the health of the plant whether the plant is root bound, if there's any rotting roots, or if there's any pests burrowing in your soil. A plant is much like an iceberg where only a small portion of it is visible to us. Now take a look at those healthy roots. They're a little dry, but I'll take that over overly wet, sopping roots, especially with a succulent. Adeniums are caudex plants where portions of their roots swell and hold moisture for the plant to access for later. This is why they are drought tolerant plants. I like these plants because of the seemingly infinite forms that the caudex can develop into. They are one of the most sculptural plants I can think of. Some will develop one large caudex or others will have more of a complex form with multiple roots intertwining to become the caudex. Cleaning up the caudices, which is the plural form of caudex, you will begin to see much of the form developing under the surface of the soil. This adenium was particularly neglected, but it tells you even growing so harshly, they can survive and even flower. When I repot them, I'll raise the plants so that over time more and more of that caudex is visible. Doing this slowly over many years doesn't have any detrimental effects to the plant, as long as it is incremental. I'm not sure why I wanted to do this, but let's get a weight on all the adeniums. The box they're in weighs 3.4 pounds, and the total weight of both the box and the adeniums was 25.8 pounds. So the net weight came out to be 22.4 pounds of chonky adeniums, and there you go. My adeniums weigh roughly the same as a toddler, and require much less care. Alright, let's start mixing the soil.
Squeezing a handful of your soil mix is a good gauge to determine if your soil mix is too heavy or not. If it cakes up and holds its shape, it's likely too dense for a succulent. You really want the soil mix to fall apart. Here's where that piece of terracotta goes. Again, it doesn't block the water from exiting, only the soil. As I raise the caudex, some of the smaller roots will be visible. You can leave them if you'd like, and they'll likely air prune. Or you can simply prune them with secateurs. Overall, this is a rinse and repeat type of situation. One that has a sort of meditative quality to it. I don't mind doing mindless tasks like repotting 20 plus adeniums. These are the moments when my mind is most at ease where I can process the day and spend time physically interacting with my plants. And I know I'm not alone in that. There's been research done into the microbes found in soil and their effects on the mind. A particular bacteria found in soil has been found to have anti-anxiety qualities by stimulating serotonin production. But all I know is that after playing in the soil for a while, I'm much happier and calmer, even if I'm exhausted. Repotting plants is a great time to prune away any damaged roots or branches. This dingle dingle right here rotted away at some point last winter and I hadn't dealt with it until now. I know, bad plant parent. But this gave me an opportunity to examine the fibrous texture in the stem. Keep in mind this would normally have toxic sap so be careful but this has been dead for a while. More soil, please. Oh wait, I'm the person that's mixing it. Here are all the kids in their new homes. I love my ugly ducklings. I love their gnarled roots and their twisting stems. There's a lot of sentimental value, even if they didn't always get the best care. But I hope they're much happier now. This time around, I'm going to be adding a top dressing of gravel. If they were in plastic, I wouldn't. But because they're in clay pots that breathe more, the top dressing will help a bit with moisture retention. It's a delicate balance. That, and I think it looks better too. I've also successfully used expanded shale for a top dressing as well.
The contrast with the wall is nice, and the pots appear a lot more integrated with the environment rather than the man-made plastic. Having so many plants can be stressful and overwhelming, especially when you need to repot them all. But they give me so much happiness, why wouldn't I give them a bit of love myself? And just a reminder, I'm not sure how long it will last, but I do have some water bottles available with my branding, so get one before they're gone. The link is down below. Thanks again for watching another episode of my botanical adventures. I hope you enjoyed a look at my Adenium collection and that inspired you to grow something today. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.